Humble Mug. When I posted my Eve of Calamity video and asked you guys about your favorite RPG moments, I got a ton of responses. And I promise that's not all for nothing. Here soon, I plan to go back through every comment, pick a handful of the games I've not tried yet, and ask you guys which RPG you think I should jump into next. So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed so that you can be there when that poll comes out. But back in June, before many of you joined my channel, I released a video talking about the games I was most excited about that had been announced for later in 2024 and in 2025. I tried to cover everything that stood out to me between Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox. So if you're behind the loop on what's coming out next, I think it's a great video to go to if you want something that's fairly comprehensive about the most exciting stuff coming out across all platforms. In that video, I expressed how appealing Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven, a from the ground up remake of the original Romancing Saga 2 looked. Romancing Saga was later talked about in the comments on my Eve of Calamity video, and I've even seen people making comparisons of that game to the Romancing Saga series in some of the recent Eve reviews that I've seen on Steam. During these last three months, the Romancing Saga 2 remake is the one RPG that's really stuck in my mind for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why exactly. I just love the imagery of the seven heroes that have revealed themselves through their actions to not be quite as benevolent as everyone thought, and thus now need to be taken down. I love the concept of a dynasty system where you inherit the throne and control the king or queen to his or her dying day, and then start up the next part of the adventure with a new ruler and a new set of friends and foes. And I love the art style of this remake too. I think we're living in a bit of a renaissance for RPG games with this kind of art style, and this game fits right into that. Just recently we've seen Tales of Arise, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and Visions of Mana for example, but those are all action RPGs. And with Romancing Saga 2, we finally get a turn-based RPG with this kind of look, and I couldn't be happier. Dragon Quest XI was one of the games that got me back into gaming again, and the look of this remake really brings back those fond memories I have of Dragon Quest XI. And it seems to have a little bit of a Shin Megami Tensei sort of nefariousness in its monster designs, which I also really enjoy. So anyways, it felt like the stars were aligning and telling me to play this game, between you guys in the comments and reviews for Eve of Calamity, and my own attraction towards this game. So when Square Enix recently gave me an early review copy of Romance- <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can you imagine that? Nah, they put out a demo, and I dived into that demo as quickly as I could get a chance to so that I could find out if this game was for me. And I honestly think I'm the ideal candidate, because short of knowing the saga name, I really know nothing about this series. Why does that make me ideal? Because it's clear to me once I played through the Romancing Saga 2 demo, that Square Enix is really trying to get this game in the hands of a new audience. Which is great for me because I was so ready to try this game that I actually attempted to play the Vita version of Romancing Saga 2, but to be honest with you, I couldn't seem to find a way to beat the slimes in the first area. And apparently, I'm not the only one. There is very little explanation on how to do anything in that version of the game, and I was honestly really turned off by it. So with this remake, it seems like they really tried to make it more accessible, but it's also worth noting that veteran players will be able to have that true, pure experience if they want as well. This game is littered with map markers and guideposts and tutorials by default, but you can turn off all of that stuff if you want a more authentic, true to the original experience. There are three difficulty modes, with hard mode actually being the same difficulty as the original game, and as I played, I found normal a little too easy actually and switched to hard when I got to the last section of the demo and my characters got hit with incapacitating moves and status effects real quick. So to me, it taught me that the difficulty of this game actually wasn't why I disliked it. It was just the fact that it didn't tell me anything in the way of how to actually play the game. To me, this version of the game strikes the right balance between having difficulty, but also allowing you to actually learn the ways of the game at the same time. And thus, this remake is a much better choice for people like me who are new to the franchise. On the other side of the coin though, I think Romancing Saga 2 Remake will be a game that makes the veterans happy too because of all the options I mentioned, plus an option that I almost forgot to say which is that it lets you listen to the original soundtrack. And to be honest, I actually prefer the original soundtrack over the reorchestrated version even with no nostalgia for it. I think that just speaks volumes as to how strong the original soundtrack was. So what platform did I pick up the demo for? 
Well, I actually decided to play this game on the Switch, because even though I know it'll probably be prettier on the PC or PS5, I decided to get it on the Switch because, like Eve of Calamity, Romancing Saga 2 is a game I could see myself playing and grinding away at on the go, and I don't have a PS Portal or Steam Deck unless someone decides to be very generous to me sometime here soon, like November 3rd, but I'm happy to say that Revenge of the Seven runs quite well for the most part on the Switch. There is slowdown and occasional hitches here and there, especially in the main kingdom where there's a lot more polygons and things to load. And there are some times in the game where it shows a lack of polish, like when my companion character just kind of falls off the cliff face that I'm slowly climbing down and then stands in my way the whole time. But 95% of the time, it's clear that this game was crafted with a lot of detail and love. Square Enix has been firing on all cylinders lately when it comes to releasing so many games in such a short period of time, and so you never know exactly where the quality control is going to be from game to game. Considering that certain Square games just dropped on the Switch with a noticeable, disappointing lack of polish in my opinion, like Dragon Quest Monsters 3, I was pleasantly surprised to see how well this game runs and flows on rather outdated hardware. Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven was developed by the same team who made Visions of Mana, which gave me some hope and I'm glad to say that while maybe it's not as pretty as something like Grand Blue, it's still a great looking game. And the combat in this game is really engaging, especially for a turn-based title. Again, like Eve of Calamity, you have an activity bar at the top, so you can plan out your attacks and choose to do things like trying to stun the enemy who is about to attack you next so that you can rid them of their turn. You can also build a burst meter where your characters do boosted combo attacks on enemies. And as you play an experiment, you'll learn what the enemy's weaknesses are and how to exploit them. One enemy may take a lot of damage from a spear, while another one is strong to a spear but weaker to a sword, for example. Additionally, a really cool feature I like is the fact that your characters can get glimmers of inspiration in battle, which unlocks new abilities for them. You never know exactly when your character will catch this glimpse of inspiration, but that unknown element is part of the appeal and the excitement. By default, you do get these little light bulb icons telling you which moves are inspiring your character the most in the present moment, but again, you never know when that aha moment will strike for them. Again, like many of the other features in this game, you can turn off the light bulb icon and go in completely blind like the original. I also really like how when the characters level up, it's not just a static level increase necessarily, they also have bars for their health and other attributes, which gives it a really cool level up feature that I don't think you see a lot in other games. There are also these formations that you can take advantage of in battle, but being this early in the game for the demo, you don't really have a need to be in any in particular except for the first one that you learn. Enemies are visible on the overworld, and if you manage to sneak up and attack them first, you can get an early swipe at them. We have the advantage here! But if they attack you first from behind, your formation is broken, and you leave your more delicate characters vulnerable to attack. That's really the most important thing you learn about formations in this demo. And I had heard before playing the demo that this game adds a lot of expression to its characters in both the overworld and in battle, and I agree. I think that the voice acting for the most part is quite solid, and I love that the king here basically says Terry Bogard's okay every time he attacks. Uh, okay. 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 The story so far hasn't been anything too crazy, but at the same time, this is a rather short demo at only two hours. I literally finished it one minute past two hours. And I'm not going to say any spoilers here, but it really ends right before the game truly begins, of course, just to entice you. So I can't really judge the story quite yet, as I'm truthfully only in the beginning of the beginning of this game. I can confirm though that you don't really need to know anything about the first Romancing Saga in order to follow along in this one. While funds are tight at the moment and I can't get every game I want. Romancing Saga 2's demo was an effortless way to burn two hours. It's just really stuck in my memory for some reason, even more than all of those other amazing looking RPGs that we have coming on the horizon as well. And so, like I said in my Games I Was Wrong About video, I'm going to stick with my gut here and pick this up ASAP. I think this demo is a great way to find out if a game like this is something that will be up your alley as well. And if you're a Romancing Saga veteran, I think you'll be pleased too. I don't see a ton of people talking about how customizable the options are in this game, so if you weren't aware of that yourself until now, hopefully that gives you some peace. I think everyone who made the comparisons to Eve of Calamity and the Romancing Saga series were right, because it seems like Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven will be a great transition from Eve of Calamity for me. That's all I've got for now, but if you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.